What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin Bees. I am a wife, a mom, a military veteran, and I spent 13 and a half years in multi-level marketing, healed my way out, and now I'm using all of my social media platforms to educate and raise awareness around the dangers of multi-level marketing and the tactics used by the leaders try to, trying to recruit you and or sell you an overpriced product. Here we have MLM fails number nine. I can't believe it. I'm so excited about this. But before we hop into that, if you'd like to follow me on social media, here's my handles uh, at the real beast mode on Instagram and also uh, beast mode LV on TikTok. So if you'd like to follow me, that would be amazing. Drop your commentary below and let's just let's get into it. So this is the first first video and I'm, I want to warn you guys. We are coming in hot from the beginning. So brace yourselves. Let's watch it together. Hold on. Let me get my glasses on so I can see it. What is that? Oh, it's a bitch. <laughs> what? Why? Why do they resort to this? This is so fascinating. By the way, did I just get back from the gym? Yes. Yes, I did. But I wanted to film this and, and we're just, yeah, anyways. All right. Let's look at what she has to say as far as her caption. I know this is going to be kind of small, but I'm going to read, we're, we're going to read it together. When people say no MLMs in 2022, oh, excuse me, it's 2022. And I still see these kinds of statements everywhere. I wonder why. Could it be because the anti-MLM movement is louder and stronger than ever? Could it be that the full picture is being given to people so that they can actually research versus, I don't know, taking your word for it? I don't know. Could, could it be? You guys let me know in the comments. I saw it not too long ago. And by the way, why do they write the longest captions ever. This is just the first screenshot. There's a whole nother screenshot. So brace yourselves. <sighs> it's 2022. <laughs> I had to see where I was at. And I still see these kinds of statements everywhere. I saw it not too long ago on a mom's page and it said, you can post your small business, but no MLMs. That's because MLMs are not small business. They're not a small business. You're a contracted 1099 employee, technically, for the company. And then she has this in quotes. I'm looking to lose weight, but no MLMs. I'm looking, uh, I'm looking for a new moisturizer, but no MLMs. I'm looking for a new lipstick, but no MLMs. I'm looking for a new shampoo, but no MLMs. I'm looking for an opportunity to work from home and make money, but no MLMs. Uh, yeah. They. People aren't wanting that. There's nothing wrong with that. And by the way, making money from home, I think that we all know that that's not the case and over 99% of people lose money or don't make any at all, according to the FTC. I think to myself, <laughs> but why wouldn't you want to support a mom trying to raise her kids from home? I mean, is it that or is it that people don't want to support an MLM because it's a predatory business model. It, it has nothing to do with helping a mom trying to raise her kids from home. Like she's stating in this, uh, in this post here, it, it has everything to do with not supporting somebody that is going to take advantage of other people or your friend, sister, or cousin, or a college student trying to juggle school and make extra income while she studies. Or someone trying to not live paycheck to paycheck anymore. No, instead they're living bonus to bonus if they're at the top of their pyramid. But okay, why not? I think I already addressed that. Because they'll earn a commission on your sale? No, has nothing to do with that. Because you think the products don't work? Also has nothing to do with that. Because if you buy from them and they end up building a business, what's so terrible about that? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Because these types of businesses, as you're referring to, um, are built off of the time, energy, and effort of other people's efforts. And in order to make substantial income in most of these, if not all of these MLM companies, you have to recruit. Sure, many of them say, you can reach the top ranks in the company um, without recruiting. How many people in the company have done it? Let us know. 
because probably none. Almost everybody at the top of these companies have substantial teams, got in early, those types of things. So this is this is fascinating. You had a bad experience with one, so now you're boycotting it. Uh, it's not boycotting it, it's supporting a predatory business model, like I've already stated. I can't count how many times I've had a bad experience at a restaurant, but I haven't boycotted them all. Did that restaurant, after you went to it, you sat down at the table, the waiter, if it's like a sit down restaurant, the waiter comes and, and says, hey, before I bring you your meal, I'm going to need you to fill these other two seats. You're going to have to find two people to fill that table over there before I can, you know, serve you your meal before I can take your order. No, you're comparing two very different things. It, it, it's not about people having a bad experience. In fact, there's a lot of people within the anti-MLM movement who have never been a part of MLMs. They just see the business model for what it is, predatory. You think the product is overpriced? It is, so that those bonuses for recruiting can be covered by the company. If you only knew the markup on your favorite big box brands, again, those companies don't require recruiting in order to make money. So again, you're comparing something that has nothing to do with the other. They don't give that to, that to their hourly employees. However, you know what they do give to their hourly employees? A wage, an hourly wage where people get paid for their time and their energy while they're clocked in. Many of these companies, if you work full time, you also get benefits, health insurance, those types of things, access to, to all of those benefits, none of which is available to MLMers unless you go like private. Very interesting. Let's look at the, that's just the first part. <laughs> that's just the first part of her post. Let's look at the second part. I see it so often and I think, wow, imagine having that mindset towards people that are trying to better themselves. Hey, uh, if you're trying to shame people into purchasing from you, it's probably not going to work at all. Yikes. Yikes. Would you really rather support a big multi-million dollar company with somebody at the top that you don't know and doesn't care about you than to support your own friend or family member or somebody you enjoy following on social media. It's almost like she's kind of standing at the point but doesn't get it because in these MLM companies, these they make millions, these companies, off of the distributors because in many of these companies, the distributor is the customer. So I feel like this is a Freudian slip or something. This is so interesting. The people at the top of MLMs make make more money? Question mark. Was that a, is that a question or are you making a statement? Do you not think the CEO of the makeup line you buy from makes more money than the sales employee? Okay, so what she's trying to say is that every corporation, every every company is in the shape of a pyramid scheme or a pyramid not a pyramid scheme. So that's what she's trying to allude to here. You know, you have somebody at the top that's making the amount of income, uh, the most income, the CEO, that type of thing. And then you have, you know, the what, whatever, you know, the manager, the employees, those types of things. She's, she's referring to the setup of the different positions within a company. And that's not the issue with multi-level marketing. There's two, in my opinion, very distinct issues. One, the way that money flows. And in a corporation, money flows down. In a, an MLM, the money flows up from the bottom. So the person at the bottom is probably, you know, doing an auto ship, ordering the new stuff, and the person above them gets paid, the person above them gets paid, and it, the money flows in reverse. So that's something really, really important to pay attention to. But they do like to use this as an explanation. Listen, every business, every big company is a pyramid. No, because it's about the, the, the flow of money. And it's also those big corporations don't require people to recruit in order to make a substantial income. MLMs do. Support people, encourage people. We do. We encourage them not to join an MLM. And we, we support them getting out. Cool. Regardless of how you feel about MLMs, almost every single business is built on the same strategies. Wrong. That's not correct. These strategies do work if you work. Oh, so now we're building in some victim blaming and shaming to those that got out so that you could say, well, you didn't work. 
Mm, that's yucky. I don't like that. Put in the effort and you'll see the results. No, that's just not how MLMs work. Normalize building a better life. I agree with that. Let's normalize building a better life. Let's normalize not getting into hustle culture. Let's normalize not joining an MLM. Love that. I love these hashtags too. Hashtag health and freedom. Hashtag freedom of speech. Hashtag first amendment. Hashtag medical freedom. <laughs> hashtag Enneagram 8. Hashtag MLM. Hashtag MLM success. <sighs> Did I also mention that this person is in doTERRA? And if you would like to look at the doTERRA income disclosure statement, you can find that in the video description. Quite interesting when you look at it. All right, let's go to the next video. Here we go. <laughs> Let's watch that again. Why does she seem super uncomfortable? This feels kind of, I don't know. Let's watch it again. When someone says that they have been in drug sales for a few years, they think their time has passed. Don't. Interesting. They think their time has passed. So somebody joined an MLM, they think their time has passed. Let's look at the uh, rest of her post. So also, very long caption. This is part one. There's a part two coming as well. So you've been in direct sales for quite some time now. And all of these self-doubt and all of these self-doubts, there it is, have been creeping in over the past few weeks. Do you think your window for success has passed? Do you wonder if success is really possible for you? Are the self-doubts creeping in? Should that be, is self-doubt creeping in? Am I reading that? It, I don't know. Maybe that's, I don't know. Whatever. What is wrong with me? Why can't I build a team like the other women I admire? Am I just not leadership material? Oh my God. Okay. We have to talk about that part because I think it's really important. If, if you're in an MLM and you're starting to feel this way, that, in my opinion, is cognitive dissonance. And I can only compare this to uh, what others have shared with me and my own experience when I was like, what, what is happening? Why do I not want to recruit? You know, what's going on? Listen, cognitive dissonance. It's time to start doing some research outside of the company and your leader. Yeah, you are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. That's what a mentor once said to me, and it's been my compass throughout my business journey. I think that statement is really gross. To me, that statement is just keep going, just keep plugging away, keep showing up. Oh God, I hate that. Still to this day, there's times when I don't feel like I'm making progress fast enough, but I am reminded that everyone's timing is different and you have to trust the process and back my vision up with daily action. The way that that paragraph is Wharton, 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 <laughs> the way that, that paragraph is written, oh my God. If we don't kick that negative thinking to the curb, you are going to be stuck in the negative loop and it's not going to get you to your goals. But you know what? I, I love how questioning what you're a part of, like they, you know, like she's mentioning here is saying, oh, well, it's not going to get you to your goals. You know what it's going to do? It's going to help you to get out, to save some money because you're not spending all this money on products. And you're going to have true time freedom. Interesting how that works. I know you want more for your life than just barely making ends meet. How many people? I, I need to know. How many people on this person's team are not living paycheck to paycheck because of their business? Because when you, I, I think this person is in Beachbody. I'm not 100% sure, but I've seen some things on her Instagram and it makes me think that she is somebody that either is quietly building Beachbody or has stepped into coaching people in MLM and or is using that kind of as a funnel to build her Beachbody team. You guys let me know because this is uh, something that, that you guys have sent me. And yeah, let's keep going. <sighs> 
I know you want to build a business that brings you daily joy and fulfillment. I know you want to bring a business that, and team that you look forward to working with. I know you want to create memories with your family and live life unapologetically through your direct sales business. Oh my God, it's so cringy. <laughs> you know what? I believe in you. You do deserve to have everything that you dream of. Part two. Here is one. <laughs> I need you to remember, though, fear is going to creep in. Doubts are going to try and derail you. People are going to throw stones at your vision. You are worthy of your dreams, no matter what anyone else thinks. Here's the thing we can't keep staying in the circle of what if. It's time to step up and take some freaking action. We need to take messy action daily on the goals that we want. We need to practice positive mindset and empowering thoughts. We need to clean up social clean up our social circle and make sure we're working with empowering women. Is she trying to say that if somebody doesn't believe in what you're doing to remove them? Yeah, cuz that's not information control straight out of the bite model. Are you ready? Are you ready to live a little bolder? Are you ready to show people that you will succeed no matter how long it takes? I need to know. Are you with me on this? Tag your team in the comments below who need this reminder right now. So tag your team in the comments if they are having self-doubt, if they're questioning what they're a part of. Wow, this is, uh... <sighs> yikes. Yeah, I don't like this. And yeah, I don't like this at all. What do you guys think about this one? Ugh. Okay, let's go to this next one. I cannot play the music. I don't even remember what it is, so enjoy the music that I pair with this. Here we go. Um, that went that went really fast. Is that is that a part of your strategy? Did you put all of those things in there so that people have to watch multiple times to 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 make it look like more people are viewing? Girl, let's watch it again, but I'm going to pause it so that we can see what she's saying. Reasons why you should join my team. Wow. Okay. Gets you moving every day. I can help with accountability. Discounts on great products. Is that subjective? Great products subjective? I don't know. Sense of community. Start getting results today. Re and, and reasons that they should join your team. Notice that there's nothing about making money. So this person is in Beachbody. And we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the income disclosure statement. Because I think that what we see a lot is a lot of these MLMers say that people join for the community. But you can find community without having to pay or buy a distributorship or uh, a business starter package or whatever in an MLM. You can find community everywhere. It, you don't have to join an MLM to find that. And so I just really find it interesting that she's saying all of these things. Oh, she put it's fun too. All of these things except making money. People start a business to make money. Could this be a Freudian slip? I don't know. We're going to look at the income disclosure statement. I apologize that I don't actually have this um, saved to pull up, but I did provide the link in the video description if you would like to check it out um, for yourself. It was just showing kind of too small. And yeah. So, anyways, let's talk about the Beach Body Income Disclosure Statement. Um, the earnings listed below do not include any expenses. That's pretty typical for uh, for companies, for MLM companies. They don't talk about um, the cost of product. Typically, they don't co they don't uh, account for uh, taxes. That's a really really big deal because you're you know in a traditional job you're in a W two. When you're in, in an MLM, it's a 1099. And one fun little fact: if you're in an MLM and you're somebody that is at the top of the pyramid, maybe you're winning contests or something like that, ask for an itemized 1099 and see what's on there. 
dare you to ask your company. Um, but they don't talk about that stuff. They don't talk about the cost to get to the, I'm going to call them indoctrination events. That's just my opinion based on my experience. Um, they don't talk about any of that. So yeah. Uh, does not include any expenses incurred by a coach in operating and growing their business, which can vary widely. Team Beachbody coach development ranks include Emerald and Ruby, and leadership ranks include Diamond and Star Diamonds. 1 through 15. So there's apparently 15 ranks, all of which are eligible to, to earn several types of bonuses. Additional leadership bonuses are available to coaches who receive or who achieve, excuse me, certain Star Diamond qualifications. The earnings and commissions reported are from uh, January 1st to December 3rd, 31st, 2021. All right, so the development ranks are Emerald. And from what I understand, Emerald is when you have two coaches under you. And that's why we've seen, and I've covered this in previous videos, and there's a lot of content creators that, that cover Beachbody in depth. But in the video that I reacted to, several months ago, they were talking about how quickly you can go Emerald. I know that there's training programs around how quickly you can go Emerald by signing up a spouse and like a family member, uh, which is fascinating to me why they would want people to get to that rank so quickly. 82.2% uh, of people in Beachbody are Emeralds. And it is 20.2% uh, of all coaches and they don't have a median average. And I think it's important that we talk about this. Average is when you take all of the commission that everybody earned, you divide it by, let, let's just say there's 100 distributors. And you have the uh, person at the bottom made zero. The person at the top made 100. And there's 100 people. You take the average of those 100 distributors. You add everything up. You divide it by the number of distributors. That gives you the average. The median is the most accurate middle point of the commission uh, amounts. And so that's why we say the median is the most accurate because it's not averaging the lowest and the top. It's giving you the middle point. But there's a lot of these income disclosure statements that don't have a median average or, or median annual income. They typically go with average because it, you know, makes them look better, allegedly. And so the average earnings for Emerald for the year was $3,283. The next level is Ruby. They are 0.7% of all coaches. So we've gone from 20% to 0.7% and their average is 12,000. What is the difference between Emerald and Ruby? Guaranteed, it is the size of the team. Guaranteed. Then you have Diamond. Diamond is 2.3% of all coaches, 100 and, or excuse me, $18,289 is the average annual earnings. Star Diamond is 1.3% of all coaches and eight, or excuse me, $119,475 is the average earnings. All development and leadership ranks it makes up 25.5% of all coaches, and the average earnings is $10,932 for the year. Coach is 75.5% of distributors in Beachbody. 75%. The major this is the majority of the company. I also find it interesting the way that they have this set up. Normally, you have the uh, companies put like the lowest rank to the highest rank. This has like, oh, here's our leadership ranks. Oh, by the way, here's what everybody else makes kind of thing. That's what this feels like to me. You guys let me know what you think. Um, and I know I apologize that this is not up on the screen. We're just going to roll with it. But 75.5% of all coaches and the average earnings for the year was $491. So 75.5% of people in Beachbody, according to their income disclosure statement in 2021, which again, the link to that is, is listed in the video description, $491. <sighs> wow. And then all ranks. So they've taken the average for all ranks. And the average is $3,169. That's the average earning 
of everybody. So they've taken all the distributors in the company, all of the, the people that um, earned money, didn't earn money, and they, yeah, and that's how they've come up with that. So that, uh, that is interesting. That is interesting. Mm -mm, I don't like it. Here's the next one. Now, the, this was actually a video that I was going to do something completely different on because what I'm noticing, and you guys let me know if you're noticing this too, is when you go to the anti-MLM hashtag on Instagram, I have noticed that there are a lot of MLMers that are using that hashtag to promote their MLM, and I find it fascinating. So the other day, I found myself scrolling. And I was looking through the hashtag and seeing what's going on. And I was like, wow, here's an interesting post. And I'm reading the, the caption. And then there was another one with the same exact caption. And I could do a whole video, honestly, on duplication within MLM, what that means, what they want it to mean, how that works, and all of that stuff. You know, if you are, but just to give like a little info, if in my opinion, if you are in an MLM and you are being taught to post the same exact things that your leader is posting, maybe your leader has more followers and you're just starting off. You guys are all going to be lumped in together because at the end of the day, you are trying to sell and recruit into the same company. There's nothing there that allows you to stand out for yourself and people notice they notice that you're using the same caption as other people. They're, that That's just not how business works. Marketing is made, or not made, but marketing, the whole purpose is for you to stand out in, in, in against your competitors. But if you're in an MLM and you're posting the same things, like we're going to see here in just a second, uh, you're not standing out. So, and then if you're using anti MLM, you're marketing to the wrong people. And I'm just going to start covering some of these people that use anti MLM hashtags. Okay. So let's look at, uh, let's look at this. This is the first post and these were just selfies. So these two people are from Saint and, um, these were, it was just a selfie. So yeah, let's read this together. Here's the other one, just so you guys know. Literally, literally the same thing, but we'll go through it. All right. I hear so much negativity about MLM and this anti MLM stuff. First of all, if you have to put anti MLM in quotation marks, it's probably not anti MLM stuff. And you probably came across somebody that said, let me see the income disclosure statement. And you're probably feeling some type of way because somebody chose to not join your team. I don't know. That's just what I think. All it really sounds like to me is anti seeing her grow. Ma'am, tell me you're salty without telling me you're salty. Wow. Oh, anti supporting your friends, anti mom, anti college student, anti army wife. Please leave the military community alone. Since you know that's what MLMs target, right? You literally just said the quiet part out loud. An MLM is targeting these certain demographics. Wow. Okay. Yes. Saint is an MLM. And no, I won't be messaging you. No, but you're going to use anti-MLM hashtags trying to promote your MLM. Okay. That makes sense. I won't message you asking for a color match. FYI, that color match form is made by us, us artist to help you, not by saint to hound you. I'm not sure that really matters, actually. I'm going to read that again. FYI, that color match form is made by us artist to help you, not by saint to hound you. Well, is saint the one that is trying to recruit people? No, it's the reps. That's odd. That's odd how that's worded. I may ask you to have a party if I know you love your products. If you say no, I move on. Well, thank you for virtue signaling. Appreciate that. This isn't your 2015 MLM. This isn't your 2015 MLM. 
Okay. I share what I love about Saint just like many of you do about Tricot. Oh, I love this argument so much. I love this fallacy so much. I share what I love about Saint just like many of you do about your coffee or your favorite Amazon find or new shoes, etc. So you're trying to compare this to affiliate marketing in a sense? <sighs> Oh man, only difference is when you purchase for me, you're helping a family you know and or you can maybe even relate to, not a huge corporation. What do you think Saint is? They are they are probably, I don't know what their annual revenue or annual sales are. But <laughs> Saint is not a like mom and pop shop like you're trying to make it seem like. Wow. Point of the story is, are you really anti-MLM or are you anti-her? Um, actually, it's the opposite. By standing up for people that are targeted, women, moms, all the people that, all, all the different demographics that is mentioned earlier in this post, we are standing up for women. You're taking advantage of them. Yikes. Side note, I appreciate every one of my customers, friends, and family member who have supported me, who continue to support me in my dreams. I appreciate you, and every color match you send to me, I treat as if it were my own, and I would only want the very best. Every color match you send to me, I treat as if it were my own. I don't know, that's kind of odd. <clears throat> also, Saint isn't for everyone. Yes, I said it, but don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> Oh my god, this is so bad. The only thing worse than this post is the hashtags. Let's look at them. Hashtag saint. Hashtag positivity. By the way, sharing education and facts is not negative. Sharing data is not negative. Sharing that you don't support an MLM, that's not negative. Not at all. Hashtag anti-MLM. Now, why would you be putting hashtag anti-MLM in there? <sighs> hashtag be kind. Hashtag saint artist. Hashtag not for everyone. I'm, I'm done with saying hashtag. Okay, we're just going to go. Custom makeup. Cream makeup. Makeup hack. Saint artist. Saint makeup. Maturing skin. So she's looking for people with maturing skin. By the way, there's all kinds of dupes for cream makeup, which is what Saint sells. There's tons. Makeup Forever is a great one if you're looking for that. Um, I don't know what this IID foundation, I think that's what that says. Look younger, age backwards. Makeup is not going to make you age backwards, but okay. Beginner makeup. Moms over 30, moms over 40. Okay, so she's looking for moms in over 30 and 40. Makeup bestie, affordable makeup. Uh, I guess that's subjective. An MLM product is, is overpriced, but that's fine. It's not fine, but you know what I mean. Makeup bestie, affordable makeup, viral makeup. Viral makeup? Ma'am, it's not viral. Okay. Oh, God. They're all saying, all, uh, that is a trend that we are seeing. MLMers are like, it's going to go viral. Okay, whatever. Five-minute mom makeup. No filter needed. Breast cancer survive. Okay, so you are trying to, by using that, you're trying to find other breast cancer survivors. It's almost like you're trying to find something that people can relate to in your story to try to recruit them. Yikes for you. Kicked cancers at. Kicked Kicked cancer, yeah, kicked cancer's ass. Uh, Cruelty-free cosmetics, breast cancer under 40, fight like a girl. The fact that she's using, the fact that she's using all of these cancer hashtags, I think is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Let's look at this next one because it's literally the same thing. Literally the same thing. <laughs> Oh gosh. Uh, look at these hashtags. Saint, positivity, MLM, anti-MLM, be kind, saint artist, not for everybody. Quite the marketing strategy. Love that for us. <laughs> Woo wee. Um, you know what? Let's actually, let's take a second and let's look at the saint income disclosure. 
Okay, let's look at it. So this is from 2020. This comes directly from the Saint website. I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger so that we can see everything. Okay, so let's talk about it. So there are 10 ranks within Saint and it shows the number of artists at the rank. It shows the percentage of active artists. It shows the annual income. And again, just like I was saying earlier, it just goes off of average. So it's taking the average of everybody. Uh, and then the, the amount of time it, it has taken people to hit that rank. I find it interesting that they include that. So let's start with the first rank. There are 5,247 people at this rank, which makes up 32.38% of active artists. I would venture to say that there are probably a lot, like this number probably would be a lot bigger percentage wise if they included everybody that bought a kit. Bet you anything. They are, so they make up 32.38% of the company. Their average annual income in 2020 was $69. Not monthly, annual. And it takes on average uh, people less than one month to hit that rank. Interesting. Artist two, 9,333 uh, 33 people are at this rank. 57.6% of the company. So within the first two ranks, we're already at uh, almost 90% almost of the company. I think it's like 80, 88. Hold on, let's do some math. 89.98% are within the first two ranks. And according to this, their average income was $890 for the year. They're not even making $100 a month. And mo the majority of these income disclosure statements, it does not include any expenses. So if they're ordering product, that's going to come out of, of that income. Income. And it on average takes them two months to hit that rank. Now, artist three, there's 1,014 at this rank, 6.26% of active artists. Do you guys see the jump? This is probably, and I have not looked at their comp plan. If you guys would like me to do that, let me know. I don't think I've really covered a ton of Saint on my channel. Um, but look at the jump. I think that artist three is probably where you... Um, are encouraged or have team members essentially. The average income was $4,835 uh, for 2020. So you can see the jump in income, wild. And then on average, it takes them seven months to hit that rank. <laughs> wow. And you can see the rest of this. Let's go to the top rank. So, artist 10. Uh, there are two people in Saint in 2020 that were at this rank out of the entire company. Two people. 0.01% mm -hmm. of the company. The average income is $1.35 million. And it has taken people 44 months to hit that rank. I don't know how long Saint has been um, an MLM company. However, I bet it is probably close to four years. That's just my opinion. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. Um, and again, I love, uh, pay attention. If you are somebody that is looking at income disclosure statements, pay attention to the fine print, okay? Because they're gonna have a lot of information in there that's not on the chart, which is fascinating. If you're somebody looking at joining an MLM and they have an income disclosure statement, look at the fine print. The earnings of the artists in this chart are not guaranteed. Uh, in this chart are not guarantees of the income, if any, that a state artist can or will through his or her participation in the compensation plan. Note that all income paid to artists summarized in this disclosure does not include expenses, just like we were talking about, included by or incur, incurred by artists in the operation or promotion of their business, which can vary widely and might include products purchased. Yeah. Advertising, promotional expenses, product samples, training, rent. Rent. I'm, I'm thinking they mean like 
if you do trade shows and stuff. Travel, telephone, internet costs, and miscellaneous expenses. Note that it takes hard work to make substantial income in the business, and some distributors make no money at all unless you recruit. That's just me adding my two cents. Success in this business requires leadership, hard work, and dedication, just like anything you do in life. Really? Does anything I do in life require me to recruit people? No, not the case. The bottom line is Saint provides artists with an excellent opportunity to earn supplemental income for those who work hard. Uh, Your income disclosure statement does not back up that, but okay. Wild. Uh, An active artist, because it says here under active percent of active artists. So we're going to talk about that because I always wonder what they mean by that. Um, An active artist is defined as a person who one executed the saint artist agreement. So they signed up, they said, yes, I'll abide by the policies and procedures Two had at least 240 personal commissionable volume, which is sales volume accrued from the sale of products to direct customers in a calendar month to qualify for participation in the saint compensation program i would love to know if you guys are familiar with the saint comp plan because i'm not i have not covered it in a ton but i would love to it I, i would like to know if personal volume personal orders is included in pcv i'll find out But if you guys know, drop it in the comments. The average annualized income for all artists, whether inactive or active, during this period was $2,206.03. But that is annualized um, income for the year. So they've taken all of the artists and they've taken the high point and the low point, the people that didn't even qualify for, uh, for commission. And they've averaged it. What I would love to see is the median income. I would love to see that. Yeah. During 2020, the percentage of individuals who executed a St. Artist Agreement but were inactive for comp plan purposes and considered wholesale customers was 33%. 33% of the company were not commission qualified and were considered wholesale customers. 33% of their distributors. If you would like to look at this further, I have included it in the video description as well. (sighs) Yeah. Let's go to the final video. Brace yourselves. It's South South salvaged soul. Why is that so weird for me to say right now? And then we're going to talk about Mona. Let's watch it together. The failure rate in direct sales is so low, but they don't think about the failure rate in everything. Okay. What about the failure rate? We're starting off strong. (laughs) We're starting off strong. So we're already comparing things that have nothing to do with what we're talking about. Cool. In like what people went to college for. How many people do you know that spent thousands and thousands of dollars going to college aren't doing what they went to college for? Now that is not failing. For example, I have a degree in medical laboratory technology. I worked in a lab. I used to have a certification. I chose not to continue in that field. That doesn't mean that it's a failure. So lumping everybody that has any kind of a degree that chose to not pursue that career field as failures, that's not how that works. Not at all. Uh, Real estate. How many people do you know that got their real estate license that never sell one house, that never end up doing anything with it? And it's not to say that they're a failure because people are going to fail in so many different things in life. I cannot tell you how many times I invested every single last cent I had to do something and it didn't work out. Okay. That's a part of life. Now with direct sales specifically, what you put in is what you get out. Now, a lot of people don't want to put a lot. And that's totally so you're gonna shame people. What this is, this is, we're gonna watch this again. This is fascinating, totally fine, but don't hate on the whole, the whole industry over it, okay? Because I know so many people that have gained so much from this industry and honestly have allowed themselves to build a foundation for the other things that they want to do in their life that they wouldn't have ever had the money to do. So you mean like the top of the pyramid? 
Yeah, because we're going to talk about the income disclosure statement because it's it's yucky. Yeah. Okay. Investments, real estate, online shops. Um, I can I can go on and on and on. So just stop hating. Stop hating on the industry. <laughs> First of all, everybody, let's take a moment to hydrate. If you have not already had some water today, drink some water. Okay. If you want, I'm not your mom. I'm not going to tell you what to do. By the way, this is called a hydro jug. No, it's not. I don't have an affiliate, anything. I just like it because I fill it once a day and I'm good. So this reel that she created was in response to somebody commenting. They're, they're not, hold on. They're not hating on other women or businesses. They're educating others so they can make an informed decision on whether or not to join an MLM with a high failure rate. Oh, I love this comment. And I know who put the comment. Shout out to you. You know who you are. Um, I love how her, uh, her handle was X'd out by Salvage Soul. Tell me like you don't want people going <laughs> for education <laughs> without telling me. It's fine. We'll do it here. So this is her response. And I'm going to actually restart this. Let's do this again. Here we go. I just had to get on here and I had to respond to this because you guys, I have to give you some perspective right now. I have to paint a picture. I need to give you a visual. Are you trying to give people a visual on your team so that they don't question what they're doing because they probably are not making any money? Or are you really like, who is the visual for? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now, a lot of people say this. Oh, the failure rate in direct sales is so low, but they don't think about the failure rate. Um, the failure rate in direct sales, as you're referring to it, network marketing, multi-level marketing, all the same thing, social retail, drop your favorite term that you've heard, uh, e-commerce, shout out to Julie Jo, because I know how she feels about them saying e-commerce, but I don't know if you guys caught this, but she was saying the failure rate in MLM or direct sales, as she referred to, was really low. That's probably a slip. It's actually not. The, the failure rate, or I don't even want to use the word failure. Over 99% of people in an MLM, according to the FTC, lose money or don't make any at all. 99%. That's a lot. The failure rate, as she's referring to, is extremely high. And that's not even taking into account what people lose themselves, time, energy, and effort, time with their family, uh, money, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting rate in everything. Okay. What about the failure rate in like what people went to college for? How many people do you know that spent thousands and thousands of dollars going to college aren't doing what they went to college for? Now, real estate, how many people do you know? That has nothing to do with the failure rate as you're referring to in MLM. You're comparing apples and oranges an interesting fallacy that you're using trying to prevent people from leaving your team even though we know that Monet is bleeding market partners right now and has been for quite some time oh, that got their real estate license that never sell one house that never end up doing anything with it and it's not to say that they're a failure because people are going to fail in so many different things in life. I cannot tell you how many times I invested every single last cent I had to do something and it didn't work out. Okay. That's a part of life. Now with. No, that's not how that works. Direct sales specifically. What you put in is what you get out. Now no. a lot of people don't want to put a lot in and that. Please do not blame and shame that 99%. And we're going to get real specific once I look at the, once we look at the Mo, Mona income disclosure statement here in just a second. That's totally fine. But don't hate on the whole, the whole industry over it. Okay. Education and awareness is not hate. The fact that you're receiving it as hate is because it is impacting your paycheck. That's the bottom line. Because I know so many people that have gained so much from this industry and honestly have allowed themselves to build a foundation for the other things that they want to do in their life that they wouldn't have ever had the money to do. They've built the foundation, in my opinion, off of the backs of other people's time, energy, effort, and money. 
Okay, investments, real estate, online shops. Um, I can I can go on and on and on. So just stop hating. Stop hating on the industry. It's not hate. That's not hate at all. Uh, it's education. It's awareness. I absolutely love this comment. And I also love the person that left the comment. I think what she is doing is incredible. And I think that what really needs to happen is, and it is happening. The anti MLM movement is providing tons of educational resources using statistics and data from the companies, from the FTC, from personal experiences as well. And it's allowing people to do research on their own versus just taking the word for, for it, taking the person's word for it that is trying to recruit them. You know, and I, I find, I, I think that that's really exciting that people can go to, you know, YouTube and they can say, they can type in the name of the company and then do anti MLM and they'll see some of the stuff that many of these reps don't want you to see. They just want you to join and they want you to do it quickly and they don't want you to think about it. How many times do we hear them say, don't overthink it? Don't overthink this. You know, it, it overthink it. Look at all the data. Look at all of the video, watch all of the videos, look at the, the, uh, income disclosure statements if they, if they have them. And if they're a company that doesn't have one, you need to run in my opinion. So let's look at the Mona income disclosure statement. I'm actually very excited, um, about it because this is from 2021 and so it has been updated. So let's check this out. I'm going to make myself smaller so that you guys can see this. Um, better. And then let me make this. Oh, I don't think I can make it bigger. Yeah. Okay. So this is directly from the company. Again, we're going to start with this fine print right up here. The average annual income for all US market partners at all ranks, which includes active and inactive market partners in 2021 was $831. Let's do a little bit of math. 831 divided by 12 is $69.25 a month. <sighs> yeah, 39% of U.S. market partners were not active in 2021 and therefore did not earn any commission. The income information in the chart below includes active and inactive market partners in 2021. An active market partner is a market partner who earned any amount of commissions in, tw in the 2021 calendar year. An inactive market partner is a market partner, wow, that's a lot of market partners, who did not earn any amount of commission in the 2021 calendar year. Okay, so what did they say, 39%? Yeah, 39% were not active. So 39% of the company did not earn any commission. A market partner's rank may vary over the course of a year. For purposes of the chart below, the rank of each Monet market partner is the highest achieved title that the market partner achieved for at least three months within the 2021 calendar year. So you had to maintain the rank for three months in order for you to be included in whatever rank we're going to discuss. The, those enrolled in November and December 2021, the highest achieved title was used for the highest achieved for two months. So instead of the three months, they did just November and December. Let's look at it, friends. And the thing that I'm excited about is that they actually use a median. So that is great. That's a true midpoint. That gets me excited. Let's look at it. Market partner. That's the first rank. 93.3% of people in the company are a market partner. Now, why is that so important? Look right here. Median annual gross earnings. Gross earnings, not including any expenses. $21. But look, they highlight this in a different color. Like that's going to be any better. 144. That's the average. This is the true midpoint as far as income, gross earnings, if you will, from Monet. And 93. 0.36% of people in the company in 2021 made an annual gross earnings of $21.
If that does not tell you exactly what is happening in this company, and this is a company I definitely do not cover enough, but that is massive. Over 90% of their company is making $21 a year. A year. <sighs> then there's a jump. MMP jumps to 1686 and it makes up 3.26% of the company. <laughs> That's when you have a team. So you go from 21 as the median annual gross earnings for market partner to 1686 for MMP. <laughs> Associate market builder, 3739. The percentage of people in the company at this rank, 1.52%. Yeah, yeah. Market builder is 0.44% of the company. They make 6,000 median annual gross earnings. 6,000. Yikes. Managing market builder, 0.79% of the company, 9,095 for the year. When you think about this, and I don't know if you guys think about it this way, and I know that this is a very long video, but I just have many things to say about this. So when you look at these dollar amounts and you're looking at the time, energy, and effort it takes for a lot of these people to build in person or build online, right? So they're being taught to, uh, to go live, to put up reels, to share the product, and a lot of them have social media courses. When you look at the amount of time and energy that it takes to try to gain a customer, and you look at the amount that they're earning for the year, and you break that down to hourly wages, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. And that's one thing that I don't think is talked about a whole lot is the, the amount of time it takes on social media, um, you know, to put, to create content, put content up, you know, and it, trying to gain a customer, trying to recruit and, and you're not getting paid for that unless you have a monetized channel, unless you have a monetized Instagram, you're not getting paid off of that stuff. And so it's just not worth it. When you look at the amount of time, if you had, um, you know, like a digital product and you were, you were creating it and you were using social media and putting up your own content and stuff like that, you know, um, I don't know. I just, I know I'm kind of all over the place. It just doesn't make sense when you look at working for an MLM and then you look at these income disclosure statements and you look at the amount of money and you think about the amount of time that they spend on a weekly basis and all of the things that they're doing that they're not getting paid for. It makes absolutely no sense. So associate market mentor, $17,519 for the year and 0.32% of the company. So we're already over halfway and they're not even making, you know, 20 K a year as an associate market partner. So like I think about all of the reels that we see from some of these top leaders that are in this company and this is, this is the median point. This is the most accurate. Could they be making more? Maybe. Could they be making less? Maybe. But this is the midline point. It's the most accurate. Then you have market mentor, which is $43,885 for the year, 0.22%. And then managing market mentor, 0.06%, $88,001 for the year in 2021. So it's just fascinating because as you look at this, Market partner is the bottom of the pyramid, in my opinion. And when I say in my opinion, I mean referring to this as a pyramid. And when you look at the top, they're making the most money. And it is the smallest percentage of people in the top two ranks than the entire company. When I earlier was talking about the way that money flows within multi-level marketing, you can see that on this. These market partners, 93.36% of the company, are the ones that are ordering all of the product. And they probably have some, you know, some overflow stock, if you will, trying to maintain ranks. Maybe their leader is, is reaching out and like, hey, we are... Um, so, however many points are away from hitting this rank, can I place an order? Can you place an order? 
you know, those types of things that happens in MLMs. But this shows, in my opinion, probably better than any of the other income disclosure statements, exactly what's going on in the company, exactly the flow of money, and that the majority of the company is not making anything. $21 over 12 months? Are you kidding me? You know, and, and I know that there's going to be some MLMers that are like, hey, they're paying for the community. Again, just like I said at the beginning of this video, you don't need to pay to be a part of a community. You can find that anywhere. Social media is fantastic for that. But when you are using community to, to market this to 93.36% of people in the company that are making $21 for the year, it, they're, they're paying to be a part of it. They're, they're paying monthly They're If they're attending events or whatever, they're, they're in the hole just to be a part of something that is based on transactional relationships. <sighs> so there you have it. I know this was a very long video, but I, as I was planning this video, I knew that I was going to have a lot to say. I really love covering income disclosure statements. They write them confusing on purpose, in my opinion, and it's just so people don't ask questions. And I want to cover this stuff. I want to talk about this stuff. I want to look at the numbers. I want to do the math. I want to show all of this stuff. And it's, it's just interesting to see how people are trying to recruit you into these types of companies, especially when their income disclosure statements look like this. So. Anyways, thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your commentary. Um, don't join an MLM. Don't join an MLM. It's it's not worth it. You're going to lose yourself, in my opinion, time, energy, money. Create your own thing. There's so many ways that you can make income from home, and it doesn't require you to pay in to be a part of an MLM community that is based on transactional relationships. As soon as you step away, as soon as you start to question, as soon as you don't get on the trainings, as soon as you leave chats or you're not active or whatever, those people unfriend you, they block you. They're watching your social media to see if you're joining another company. It's just not worth it. If you loved this video, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up. Uh, you can subscribe. That would be awesome. And if you'd like to be notified anytime I do a live or put a video up or a short or anything like that, then you can turn the little bell notification on. Thank you guys for being here and I'll see you on the next video. Bye everybody.